Hi, I'm Mark Spencer. In today's Motion Magic, we'll look at recreating a condensed version of the opening title sequence to the Netflix series, Stranger Things. Now, if you haven't seen this opening title sequence, I recommend you go to Art of the Title and search for it there. There's also a great article below. And if you want more information about the designer of the font, you can go to this link right here. And there's an excellent article about Ed Bengett, who designed this font among many, many other fonts over the course of his life. So here I am in motion, I've created a new project. And in my file browser, I have a couple of reference images that I grabbed from the web that will help me build this. So I'm gonna select two of them and import them. Then I'm gonna hold down Command Spacebar and drag out. And I'm gonna take these and drag them off of the main canvas. Now I do wanna see them, so from the View menu, I'll choose Show Full View Area or Shift V. They're a little dim, so I'm gonna to go to Motion's Preferences, to the Appearance tab, and change the full view opacity down as far as I possibly can. And now items that are off the canvas show up quite clearly. I'll press F6 to close the timing pane, Command Spacebar to resize, and Spacebar to move things around. I'll also scale this down, we don't need it quite so big and move it over here to give us a little bit more room. Okay, for the first thing we wanna do is recreate this ending title, and then we'll look at how to animate it. So T for the text tool, escape, and you can see in the heads up display that I've already installed the Bengot font, which you can find online. I'll center align it, make it quite a bit larger, reduce the line spacing, and also reduce the tracking. To get more precise, you can double click, place the cursor between any two letters, and press Option Command and the left and right bracket keys in order to kern or change the distance between individual letters. Then from the toolbar, I'll select the Transform Glyph tool, and I'll hold the Command key down to select both the first S and the last R, then hold down the Shift key and drag a corner bounding box to scale them both up the same amount. And then I'll drag them both down the same amount. And then I'll select just the S and move it over a little bit. Now I want the text to be outlined with this and be red, but I also want it to have some texture like we can see particularly in this close up here. So with the text selected in the text inspector, I could enable the outline like that but instead, I'm gonna keep the outline off and convert it to 3D text. Then I'm gonna change the front edge to be a square ring with no depth, because I don't want any thickness to it. The back edge will be the same. And next, I'm gonna add a camera by clicking here in the toolbar, Shift-Z, and I'm gonna zoom in nice and close so I can take a look at our 3D text. Rather than selecting one of these presets, I'm gonna build a custom material. I'm gonna start with a generic substance, and I'm gonna make it black. Then I'm gonna add a layer, a finish layer of a polish type. And I'm gonna crank the reflectivity way up to give it some shininess. So already we're adding some nice texture here. Next, I'm gonna add another layer of distress dirt. I'm gonna select the third dirt type to give a little more grunge to our text. Finally, I'm gonna add an emit layer I'll change the emit color to red and crank the intensity well over 100%. And now we get something close to what our reference image looks like. I'll also turn off the 3D grid and I'll press Shift V so we can focus to the actual canvas area. Now to give it a little bit of that glow, I'm gonna press the K key to make a clone of this layer. I'll move the clone behind the original text layer and then I'll add a couple of effects to the clone by clicking the filters pop-up menu and choosing glow, glow, and then glow, light rays, and crank the amount of light rays way down. Play a little bit with the glow radius and threshold. We can see the original has areas of light and dark, so we wanna recreate that as well. So shift V, shift Z to fit back to the window. I'm gonna create a new group Shift Command End. I'm gonna to go to the library, to Generators, 
I'm going to choose the clouds generator. And in the inspector for the clouds generator, I'm going to set the speed to zero. By default, the clouds move. I don't want that. So I'll set the speed to zero. Then I'll take this group here that has our composition in it and add an image mask to it and drag this clouds to the image mask and set the image mask to luminance. Finally, I'll go back to the clouds and increase the size so that we get some light and dark areas in our text. Finally, I'll press R for the rectangle tool, drag out a rectangle above the title, press the escape key, reduce the width, right click, choose edit rectangle, and move it out to match the edges. I can quickly press Shift Command R for the rulers and drag out a guide to help align this. Command D to duplicate the rectangle. I'll drag it down with the Shift key. Command D to duplicate and Shift drag to the right. And there we have a decent imitation of the overall static title. So I'm gonna to wanna to animate this title to some music. In the file browser, I have a couple of different mixes that were created by the excellent composer, Mary Plummer, who did the training for Logic for Ripple. And I'll grab this one right here, add it to my project, and we'll check it out in the audio tab. Here it is. And then F6 for the timing pane, Command-9 for audio. I'll make this bigger so that we can see we've got the entire audio track contained within our project duration, which is right about 15 seconds. I'll press F6 to close the timing pane. Now to animate the text, I'm gonna use a sequence text behavior. So I'll select the text layer, go to the behaviors pop-up menu, text animation, sequence text. I'm gonna create a custom animation. I'll take the first letter and drag it up and drag it over. And now each of those letters moves into position, but nothing like what we want. I'll also temporarily turn off these bars because we don't need to see them. So in the inspector for the sequence text behavior, the first thing I'll do is increase the spread all the way so that all the letters animate pretty much at the same time. I'll change the speed to ease out so they come to a smooth stop. And then the key part is in the variance section, I'll crank the variance up to 100% so that each letter starts in a different location and moves into position. If I don't like that particular animation, I can click the Generate button in order to generate different random starting points to find one that I like. Now for the shapes, I'll move closer to the end of the project. When everything comes together, right about there, I'll turn these on. I'll select them all with the shift key and tap the I key so they all start at this point in time. I'll move to the end, close to the end, and in the shape inspector for geometry, for the size, I'll set a keyframe for all of them. Then I'll move back in time, right click and choose edit rectangle, hold the option key down, and have each of these start nice and small. So now each of these animate on right towards the end of the project. Now the title sequence starts with a camera very close up on the text here. So I'm gonna change this camera's name to Final. Then I'm gonna duplicate it and call this Cam1. I'll move to the beginning of the project. And here, this is really fun because I can dolly in really close and choose exactly what I want this camera to focus on. Then I'll move forward about a third of the way through, adjust my positioning, and that's my first camera move. I'll duplicate this camera, call the second one Cam2, press I to trim its starting point to the playhead, and then for Cam2, I'm gonna create a different framing. So I can double click one of these tools to reset them and then zoom in on a different part. Now we have a cut from this shot to this shot. Finally, I'll move the final cam to the top of the stack. 
It's always the top camera that you can see. Trim its end point to the playhead for the final assembly. So now we have three different shots from three different cameras. To tweak the timing of the animation, we can customize how fast these letters animate on. So with the sequence text selected, I can change the speed to custom. Then with the playhead at the end of the project, I'll set the custom speed to 100% and set a keyframe. I'll go to the beginning of the project and set the custom speed to zero. And now we have the same animation we had before. However, if I press Command-8 to go to the keyframe editor, I can now choose how this animation unfolds. So if I want the beginning, Shift-Z to fit to the window, to move a little more slowly at the beginning, say through this first camera, I want it to move a little more slowly, I'll option click to set a keyframe and move that keyframe down so the animation happens a little more slowly when we're close up. I'll also command drag on this last keyframe to have a nice smooth ending. So we have full control over the speed of the animation for each of the different camera angles. Now as a final step at the very end here, I'd like this G to move up into place a little more dramatically than it is right now. So with my playhead uh, back where I want it to start, Start, I'll turn on recording, select the text, select the transform glyph tool, select the G, and move it down. Then move to the end and move it back up into position. And now I can play the project. Click the subscribe button below. If you have an idea, comment, or suggestion, leave those below as well. Go to rippletraining.com for fast professional training on Final Cut Pro, Motion, and DaVinci Resolve from industry professionals.